You want to move the 11? Solving for x, getting x by itself. You're going to move 11. What's the story now? You're going to get x equals negative 6 minus 11. I'll again emphasize that. Emphasize the effect of translation by writing it in blue. And now what's negative 6 minus 11? x is what? Negative 17. OK, you guys OK with this? All right, so those are the first um, kind of steps in solving these equations. But they're not the only steps, OK? You can have equations. Now, let me show you what happens with this type of setting, meaning what if you have 2x is equal to a negative 12, and you have to solve for x and get x by itself? What do you guys notice? What's happening to this x? Anybody know what's happening to that x? Anybody guess? You got a 2 next to it, but that's not the whole story. What's that 2 doing here? 2 is being multiplied to x. You guys okay with this? All right, so let's show you another piece of logic here. Here's what's going on. If you have an equation here, the left side equals the right side, then here's what you're free to do. You're free to do two things. You can take a non-zero number, call it c. And what you can do is multiply c to both sides. You preserve that balance that we're talking about here in your book. OK? And remember, c cannot be the value 0. Do you guys know why? Because what's 0 times anything? 0. So you make everything go away. It's true that 0 equals 0, but there's nothing left to solve that. OK? What's the other thing you guys are free to do with that non-zero number? You guys know? If the left side equals the right side, then you are free to divide both sides by c, again, where c can't be what? Be 0. Does anybody know why? What's any number divided by 0? You guys know? It's undefined, right? So the criteria is that that c value can't be 0. Now, this is the logic. OK. Well, what does that mean for our example here that you guys are looking at? What that means is that 2x equals a negative 12, OK? 2 is being multiplied to x. And remember, you're solving for x, which means you have to get x by itself. OK, you want x by itself. You guys OK with that? So how do I get this x by itself where you see x by itself in these pre previous examples? How do you do that? You're going to have to do something to both sides. You're going to have to undo the multiplication of 2. You know what process undoes a multiplication? Division. Division, you're right. You divided now both sides by the number doing the what? The multiplying. What number is being multiplied to x? 2. So divide both sides by the value 2. You're really using this second version here. Okay. Do you guys know what happens next? What's the story? Do you remember that property we talked about last time called the cancellation property? Don't you have two times something here? Is that the same number down here too? So by the cancellation property, what can you guys do? What do you cancel? The twos. Okay, good. <coughs> So you're left with x on the left. Notice x is by itself. And then you get a negative 12 divided by a positive 2. Negative divided by positive is what? Yeah. Is negative. What's 12 divided by 2? So ladies and gentlemen, x is the value what? Negative 6. Negative six. <coughs> OK, let's do a note here. Let's do a check. You guys remember, what does that mean to find the value that x is negative 6. Well, 
Go to your original equation. Plug in the value for x you just obtained. What's the value? Is it true that yeah. 2 times negative 6 equals negative what? 12. Is that true? Yes. So this is a true statement. You found the value to multiply here with the number 2 to get a negative 12. OK, so you got a true statement. Now, some of you guys may say, I could have done that without doing any of this um, logic stuff, right? I could have done that without doing this. Well, maybe you could have. But these problems get a little bit more harder and harder to do. So that's why you need a sort of system, and you need a set of logic here that enables you to solve your equation. OK, you guys OK with this? Yeah. You sure? <coughs> OK, you guys remember that? Yeah. You do? No? OK, well, let's see. How about negative 3x equals negative 36? You're solving for x. You're going to try to get x by itself. What's happening with x? You say, I see a number next to that x, right? What number do you guys see? Three. All right. Isn't that again negative 3 times x? Isn't the number negative 3 being multiplied to x? OK, so how do you undo the multiplication of a negative 3 to that value x? You divide both sides by? By the negative 3. And what happens with the negative 3s? They cancel, and you got x equals. What's negative 36 divided by a negative 3? What's a negative divided by a negative again? It's positive. 36 divided by 3 is? 12. You guys remember this? So you guys can do that too. Is that easy or hard? Is that easy? OK, anybody have any questions? No, you remember this stuff? OK, let's do another example. Six x equals thirty-two. So, what's being uh, multiplied to the value x? Six. How do you undo the multiplication of six? Divide by your six, and you get your six as a cancel, and you get x equals. What is 32 divided by 6? <laughs> Anybody remember? What's 32 divided by 6? Are you going to reach for your calculator and say, oh, I know. 5.3. And I don't know. I got all these threes. <laughs> so I don't know. You're going to reach for your calculator? Is that what it is? No. Remember, what did I say about your calculators? They're going to they're gonna do what? They're going to slow you down. OK, when you're in this situation and when you have to divide and it's not a nice whole number, which probably is the more realistic.